We get to talk with Conrado Garcia Madrid, sitting in his home in Mexico, uh, Querétaro, which is a couple hours north of Mexico City, and I'm here in Belchertown, Massachusetts in the United States. And we're going to get to talk about a project which was one of our very first projects together 24, 23 years ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah. around vehicular congestion in Mexico City. So you and Annabelle were undergraduates at the TAM in Mexico City, studying business administration, business economics, and had taken a class on system dynamics with me and wanted to do a thesis project, which is a year-long project um, for graduation. And you chose, um, after some deliberation, to work on vehicular congestion, which is a small problem in a city of 18 million people. Small problem. <laughs> and... <clears throat> You started with a system dynamics model and ended up doing some good scenario planning and analysis. And mm -hmm. it actually ended up having an influence on the Department of Vehicular Congestion that's studying it in Mexico. So right. what is it that you remember about <clears throat> how this project started and, and, and the process wow. of back well, in the I would like I would like to start saying that this this is by far one of the most important projects I have done in so many aspects of my life. <laughs> it has influenced and a few things. A few things, a few things. It, it basically changed my life. And uh, it started with a, a, a class, uh, as a class project. Uh, the impact was really interesting. The potential impact was really interesting. So that's the reason Annabella and, and myself uh, started talking about doing this as a thesis project because that is not a trivial decision. Right, and so uh, this is the same Annabelle that you started to work on in the project and then did the thesis project with is the same person who's your wife and you've been with forever. Right. That was one of the impacts of this project. That was one of the impacts of the, of the project. Not a trivial one. <laughs> no, not trivial, right. <clears throat> so you started so, to look at doing it for, as a thesis project. Yeah, so, so we started the, doing the research. Well, we, we, we went to talk to you. You say no like three times, and then uh, uh, for some reason you agreed to, to advise our, our thesis project, and it was a, a, a really great experience. Um, it was the first time that we went out and interviewed people to do both, but because we, we actually did a, a, a causal loop uh, diagram, and we did the simulator. We, we, we did the, the stock and flow uh, diagram and actually incorporate numbers, statistics, uh, uh, graphics, a lot of things uh, that were really, really interesting to, to understand. And of what course- the, What is the key problem that you were looking at? that there's basically the, the idea of, of what is going on here. And as, uh, as I say in the, uh, in other, explaining the other project, the Mexico City is a, a huge, a very chaotic city. If, if you haven't been there, you, know, uh, you can imagine 20 million people, 25 now million people living there. You know, and they, the vehicle, vehicular congestion problem was a huge one, still, still is. And, and the idea was to understand what, are, what were the root causes of, of the problem. And, and, and if there were some ideas and some strategies that, you were, that we were able to do or to propose in order to, to diminish the problem. You know, that, that's, that was basically the idea. And, and in the course, you told us to understand uh, complex problems, and I think couldn't get any more complex than that. No? <laughs> so it's interesting to to understand that what were the the causes, and and what what it was more interesting even than that is that there was no institution in Mexico City that were focusing their efforts to try to understand that problem. No, that that was the most shocking part for for us. So we understand we, we had interviews with people understanding the pollution. We had impact with people understanding demographics, uh, a lot of uh, the public transportation. You no know, people 
Uh, a lot of, of things happening back then, and, and the interviews were very interesting. People opened their doors to, to give their perspective. Uh, it was also a very interesting multi-stakeholder uh, project to understand. And one of the things that was very clear back then is that a lot of people had a very specific um, expertises uh, around the problem, but no one has the expertise of understanding and trying to relieve that specific problem. Excellent. And so how does one measure vehicular congestion? What is the metric for that? We're talking about a um, number of cars, well, of course, no? Uh, we're talking about a number of the population, uh, what, what was the demographic back then? Uh, we were talking about the capacity. The, the, some people were talking about the capacity of the main streets in, in Mexico. So basically the combination of all of those uh, gives you the, the measure of, okay, we are way beyond the problem right i think one of the metrics that i remember that was <clears throat> most interesting to me was they measure it in average speed the average velocity right. of cars and you have all these people trying to move around this whole city and the average velocity was very very low so it just took a long time because of the way the system worked for everybody to get everywhere right and and it's funny you say that because last week i i went visit my mother to in mexico city and they had these ridiculous speed uh, limits there. So they, they did it worse. So it's amazing the capability of doing that. <laughs> I think the other fun thing about this project is you were doing this project when you were about 22, 21, 21 22 years old. So if people think, oh, this kind of project and this kind of complexity is only done by old people like you. <laughs> I said, well, actually, that's not true because this big project you did, you and Annabelle were 20, 21 years old when you were doing that project. So. And, and that, that's the reason I was saying that, that I was so pleased to see people open their doors, uh, important people in the city, in the city government back then opening their, their doors to, to understand and to try to reflect about that problem. No? When we said what we were trying to do, when we shared the, the, the results, they were very open to, to, the, to that, uh, that kind of analysis, even though we were kids, basically, you know, trying you to were. say. So I love that story of <clears throat> the first time you went to that one group. So maybe you could tell that. And they said, yeah, what could, you, what could two business students from the town possibly teach us? And then they called you a couple months later to say, so have you come up with anything new? <laughs> right, right. They actually formed that group as a result of the thesis project. They, they say, okay, we need, a, we need a group, a multidisciplinary group uh, to understand more deeply this kind of thing. So they did, and, and they invited us to, to share that. That's when they say, okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, right. And, and all of a sudden, we're, they were calling us to, to say, okay, do you have anything, anything new in your, in your results? Exactly. So I think this is a great example of <clears throat> you obviously didn't know anything about vehicular congestion other than being a citizen living in the, in the city. But as a strategic systems thinker, very early in your career, you were you know, a student, undergraduate student, that the kinds of questions you were asking, the way you were looking at it and putting it together and then testing what you were finding through the simulation through right. the qualitative analysis, through the scenario planning, um, led to some very interesting questions that they could then explore. Yeah, and actually, that, that, th this happens a lot, uh, still, still happening. But uh, that, that was the first time that we experienced someone saying to us, uh, how long have you been working on vehicular congestion? How long have you been working on the government? No? Because... Uh, the kind of analysis that we're, we're doing, this, this kind of methodology gives you the opportunity to, to concentrate a lot of information and to, to do the, the right questions. 
Right. So I think that's a critical thing is to realize it's not that we know better answers than people who've been doing this for a very long time in a specific industry or sector. It's that it leads to strategic right. questions that they think, oh, that's a good question. Right. Yeah. Yeah, actually, the, the, the group they formed was a, a, a think tank. No, the, the intention was to reflect about those questions. Uh, not really getting to an answer, no, uh, but to understand the question and to get to better ones. That that was for me the the most important impact uh, in the city. The implementation of the the strategies was is really really difficult to do. But still, one of the the things that we were recommend, and I'm not saying that this is happening because of our thesis project, but was to 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 give other cities. Uh, the opportunity, infrastructure, uh, attractiveness to for people from from Mexico City to to wanted to go other places. And uh, actually, I'm having this interview from Querétaro, and I've been living here for 18 years now uh, because of of that specific thing. It's not gonna solve. They're not solving the problem if they don't solve the population problem. No? So. They are doing a lot of things. The rate of uh, still growing, the population in Mexico City is still growing, which is amazing. But the, it's still growing, but at a very, very slow rate. So that's that's a good thing, actually. Earthquakes have helped a lot. <laughs> People are living to Querétaro, Puebla, and other cities in, in Mexico. But <laughs> but that, that's that's basically the 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 root cause, you know, of 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 this of this thing. So a couple of big, in, <clears throat> three big impacts from the project were they stud, they formed um, a technical, the government formed a technical think tank study group to start exploring the questions that these two undergraduate students put before them. Um, that was right. a big one. And so they're asking the right kinds of questions or our kinds of questions. Second was you got um, honors, you graduated with honors because of this project and that was- right. Um, you had to have this kind of project to be able to graduate with honors, and you did. Um, that was great, you and Annabelle. And you got to work with Annabelle and eventually marry her and move to Querétaro and have kids and have a whole life. So that was another yeah, Small thing. details. Exactly. A small impact. <laughs> exactly. So anything else you'd like to share about this project that you most remember were either impacts or experiences during the project? Yeah, the, one of the most uh, interesting conversations they had in that group was the, the fact that they were doing more attractive. They, they were doing the city more attractive when creating more infrastructure for cars. No, They were answering the question of capacity versus people. And given the fact that the people were way higher than capacity, so they were... They, they created actually a second floor of the Periferico, which is one of the most important uh, highways in, in Mexico City. They created a second floor. They, they created a lot of infra infrastructure that is still was, uh, they were doing more attractive the city. So people from other parts of the country wanted to go there thinking that that was going to solve the problem. And, so the question was, shall we, in the short term, we should talk about capacity, but we need to talk about, in the long term, to talk about population and how to incent, incentive people to go elsewhere. So right. for me, that was more a very, very interesting strategic conversation that when you're talking with the government in Mexico, you're really not used to that. <laughs> so... So it was a pleasure to be there, no, in, in terms of, of having that kind of conversation. And this was the first project where we were doing a lot of scenario planning. Right. And with the idea of you can come up with strategic analysis, it's a, which typically assumes that the scenario that we're in, the situation, the context we're in will remain the same. And by looking at some strategic variables, such as government, will people continue to live in, in big city? 
or move to the other cities, the periphery. Um, it, you know, so some basic assumptions. Um, is the strategy for vehicular congestion for Mexico City robust to these different assumptions? Right. It's not that one of these other scenarios is the right one or true one, really exploring um, what will happen if it does start to move in that. Will the strategy fall apart um, or be the strongest no matter what happens? And so that was one of the, also the first applications that you did. Of right. Learning. And actually, that, that was the first time that that we use a simulator to understand the different scenarios no in our in our most important metrics so people were able to see if they took a a, a decision or what kind of decision they were making uh, they were able to see the impact in the future in a very cool way you know using the graphics and the simulator so that was part of the the show of the production of the show but actually, it was very interesting to understand, and also as, as being the first project in this kind of, of situation, so in a macroeconomic uh, situation like this one. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing this story, Fernando. Thank you.